All right, you guys know how I feel about some of the latest designer fragrance releases that's come out here over the, the past uh, couple months here in 2023. Well, that got me to thinking, and I said to myself, self, what are some fragrances that, that bring you back to, or that not really bring you back to, but that are, in my opinion, masterfully done fragrances? Fragrances that I think if you guys that have not put your nose on them would inspire you and if not remind you, introduce you to what a great designer fragrance can be, and in most cases used to be. Yeah. Let's talk about those kind of fragrances. Let's get it. What's going on YouTube? My name is Darren, the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. We cover fashion and fragrance on this channel. So if you're into looking good and smelling great, you found the right channel. Make sure you hit subscribe, man, and make sure you hit that bell icon as well to ensure when I upload new content on YouTube, you'll be one of the first people to get notified. So you see the title of today's video, man. These are some masterpieces in my humble opinion. So designer fragrance brands, if you're listening to this, just refer to this list, man, and go back to making fragrances that are like these fragrances that are creative, man, and all inspiring fragrances. I would love to see that uh, here over the next half of 2023. But anyway, man, we're going to jump into it, man. So if you want to see, in my opinion, what are some great like perfect 10 out of 10 masterfully done designer fragrances. That's what we're going to be getting into today. So you know how we rock. If you want to see what's on the list, you know the routine. Keep it locked right here. Let's get it. The Bowtie Fragrance Guy. All right, guys, we are back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's go ahead and jump right into this video. You know what, guys? I've been meaning to, to highlight my nice background back here. And because of the, my camera, it blurs everything out. I just want to show you guys, take you a quick little walkthrough of what I got going back here. Because I don't think you've ever really been able to see some of these signs. But this sign right here smell amazing. You know, with the hashtag BTFG, of course, Bowtie Fragrance Guy. My Tom Ford books, of course my novices uh, fragrances I've done, my collection with novices. I have my humidor back here with my cigars. And of course, this BTFG neon um, sign. I've been wanting you guys to kind of see that, but again, it's kind of hard to see all that stuff back there. Um, but man, you know, maybe one day I'll change up my setting or something like that. I've got something that I'm working on um, and I'll probably be shooting my videos in a different location and stuff. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. I just wanted you guys to know what was back there because you can never really see it because obviously it's always blurred out uh, by this camera. This first fragrance on the list comes from the house of Guerlain and this is called L'Instant de Guerlain or some people affectionately refer to this fragrance as Liz. Now I was able to get my hands on a bottle of the initial release that has the black going around the uh, perimeter of the bottle here. Uh, they do have some uh, more uh, modern interpretations of this fragrance or versions of this fragrance. They do have one that's in the same bottle without the black going around the outside. And then there's some bottles now where they've actually changed the entire presentation of the bottle. But, you know, it's still kind of the same fragrance, although not as good as these initial um, releases or bottles of this fragrance was. This particular uh, version of this fragrance was released in 2005. And man, it has become a classic for a reason. In the opening, man, you get this nice, kind of spicy, balsamic combination of star anise uh, and elemi in the opening of this fragrance. With this kind of lemon citrusy uh, kind of a core right sandwiched in between those two notes. So it's really, really intriguing um, and interesting opening to this fragrance, man. And then as it dries down, the star players to my nose are gonna be that cacao and patchouli, a very nice chocolatey kind of patchouli vibe. And man, this is what it's all about, man. Creative fragrances that are really, really good. You know what I'm saying? This is an amazing scent. Easily a, a kind of a 10 out of 10 scent in my humble opinion. Like I said, it's hard to get your hands on this exact bottle uh, unless you want to, you know, trade it in an arm and a leg for it, <laughs> or maybe even a kidney. But yeah, there are versions of this. I think the one that looks similar to this without the black is still really good. Um, 
batch of these fragrances, of this fragrance. So check it out, man. From the house of Guerlain, this is called Lidge. All right, guys, the next fragrance on this list, you talk about a unique, amazing, masterfully crafted fragrance. Again, from a fragrance brand that I think is really underrated when it comes to their fragrances. From the house of Costume National, this is called Ohm. This is called Ohm. Now, this is the EDT. Um, I'm sorry, this is the EDP version of the, this fragrance. They do have a parfum uh, that was recently released, but my God, guys, this is so good. Uh, this is my second time having this fragrance in my collection. <laughs> ah, this smells good. All right, so what do you have in here? Cinnamon, cloves. There's a nice, bright, uh, fresh, citrusy opening to this as well. Uh, when it dries down, you're going to get some thyme and patchouli. Those are some of the main notes to my nose. But again, you talk about a fragrance that is unique and creative. And this stuff performs like a monster on my skin. i never forget the first time I smelled this. I was at a local... Uh, shop here uh, where I reside that sells men's uh, suits and haberdashery and I put my nose in this fragrance and I've been in love with it ever since Definitely one that I recommend you get your nose on especially if you're tired of the same old same old This will give you some inspiration man. It's from the house of costume national and it's called Ohm. All right guys the next fragrance on this list has been discontinued in this exact form But the fragrance is still available. It's from the house of Christian Dior and this is Dior Ohm Parfum <clears throat> Dior Homme Parfum, it does remind you of the original Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense, but they added that leathery nuance to the dry down. Spectacular. Easily a masterpiece, 10 out of 10 kind of fragrance. Again, most of the fragrances from the Dior Homme line, in my humble opinion, are 10 out of 10 fragrances. And this one certainly is no different, especially with the addition of the leather. Oh my gosh, in the dry down of this scent, man. It's still powdery, it's still kind of chocolatey, and that cacao patchouli thing is in here. But again, that leather just takes it to the next level. So definitely one that you can put need to put your nose on. Like I said, there are uh, there's another version of this out. I haven't smelled that one, but I've heard uh, in all commentary that I read on it indicates that it's still very similar to this one. It's from the house of Christian Dior. Again, it's a Dior own Papa. All right, guys, the next fragrance on the list very well could be my favorite designer fragrance of all time. And I've said that and I've been consistent about that. It's from the house of Thierry Mugler. This is called Pure Havan. Pure Havan, I have a backup bottle of this. Um, this is a fragrance, again, another one that's been discontinued that I'm always going to have in my collection. Okay, this is piped cherry tobacco uh, that you get in this with some patchouli as well uh, on the dry down. Again, just one of the best things I've ever put my nose on in the world of fragrances. Again, definitely uh, one of my top designer fragrances. Like I said, probably my favorite designer fragrance. It goes without question, in my humble opinion, this is a masterpiece of a fragrance. It's from the house of Thierry Mugler. This is called Pure Havai. All right, guys, the next fragrance on this list, when this fragrance was released in 2016, the community was in, a, in a uproar. It was buzzing because this fragrance was so good. It's from the house of Issey Miyake. This is called Noir Ombre. Noir Ombre, man. Listen, there was a time frame where this fragrance was said to be discontinued and you could not get your hands on it. And I'm so glad that I found it. I was scrolling on Fragrantica one day. Um, I'm sorry, FragranceNet. Um, and I happened to come across this fragrance, okay? I happened to come across this scent on Fragrantica, so I recommend you guys do that sometimes, even if you're not looking for anything in particular. Just scroll sometimes, and sometimes you will find a gem like this that will pop up uh, that have been hard to get your hands on. And I'm so glad I got my hands on it. Easily a 10 out of 10 fragrance. This is so good, guys. Cinnamon and nutmeg in the opening. There's some leather here. There's some tonka bean in here, so I love that sweetness that the tonka bean adds to this, um, to this DNA. Again, it is just a masterpiece. And of course, as it is indicated by the name, Amber is the main accord on the dry down. Phenomenal scent, man. Check it out. It's from the house of Isimiyaki. This is called Noir Ombre. All right, guys, this next fragrance was released in 2020. Easily to me, probably the best release from uh, that, for not so good reasons to some people, unforgettable year. <clears throat> but this fragrance came out uh, during that time frame, and it was one of the best in class. And it's from the house of Cartier, and this is Pasha de Cartier Parfum. 
Pasha Le Cartier Parfum. This is so good, man. It has this, to me, one of the standout notes in the opening is fur balsam because it gives this almost green, piney kind of nuance to the fragrance. But outside of that, man, very warm, all right? So there's some ambery touches here. You got benzoin, labdanum, uh, vanilla, patchouli. Oh my gosh, guys, you just gotta get your nose on this one. It is so freaking well done, man. Shout out to Cartier for releasing this one in 2020. We were already in that era where designer fragrances were being very redundant as it relates to what they smell like. And this uh, really separated itself from the pack. So check it out, man, from the house of uh, Cartier. This is Pasha de Cartier. Puff on. All right, guys. Now, the next fragrance on this list is such a masculine, manly fragrance, guys. And it comes from the house of Chanel. And this is Ego East. This is called Ego East. Nope, not Platinum Ego East. Just Ego East. Now, Platinum Ego East is a good kind of barbershop kind of scent in its own right. But, man, this right here is the home run. Masterpiece. Ego East, guys. What's in this? You got sandalwood. You have cinnamon uh, in this as well. You have carnation and tobacco. Those are some of the main notes to my nose, okay? And uh, again, this is one of the best from Chanel. If you're looking for something from Chanel that's masculine, manly, and it is very, 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 very well done, this is the one that you need to get your nose on. Like I said, Platinum Ego East is good as well, but I prefer... The Ego East um, out of the two, man, because I love that cinnamon, sandalwood, and tobacco combination in this fragrance. Just absolutely dynamite uh, in my humble opinion. So if you don't have this one yet, especially if you love Chanel fragrances, you need to have this one in your collection. This is called Ego East. Now, this next fragrance is also one of my favorite designer fragrances of all time, and they really broke the mold with this fragrance from the house of Tom Ford. This is, of course, one of my favorites. This is Noir Extreme. Tom Ford Noir Extreme. You already know, guys. If you're talking about something that really separated itself when this came out, very unique because of that Kofi Accord in here, which again is an Indian dessert. But this thing is just really nice, man. You have a nice balance of sweet notes and those florals uh, in this scent. Just amazing, man. You guys know how I feel about this fragrance because I talk about it all the time. One of my favorites of all time. Definitely a masterpiece in my opinion. This is Tom Ford's Noir Extreme. All right, guys, this next fragrance blew me away when I first smelled it. I actually smelled the uh, EDP version of this first. It was a little bit too, too much for me at the time, although now I really want to get the EDP. But this is just the EDT version, and at the time it was perfect for me. From the house of Tom Ford, Black Orchid. Black Orchid. What a masterpiece by Tom Ford. I think they actually marketed this one to women initially, but... Definitely a unisex fragrance. And in my opinion, when guys wear this, it really takes on another character, okay? yang lang is in here. Uh, you have some dark truffle uh, in the opening of this fragrance. There's some patchouli in here as well. This is just, again, tuberose, a dynamite fragrance. And he did a really good job of infusing those uh, florals uh, in here and then kind of covering those soils up and not making it too feminine all right we're adding some of those really nice earthy and woody notes like patchouli and the truffle man masterpiece of a fragrance uh in my humble opinion man i love this fragrance from the house of tom ford again this is called black all right guys and the next fragrance on this list comes from the house of valentino and this is valentino uomo the original valentino uomo Man, this is one of those fragrances that I got this earlier in my fragrance journey. And this is that one of those fragrances that I just had to have. And it was kind of hard for me to acquire it at first. I remember I bought a bottle one time. And I got a fake one from, I don't remember where I got it from. But anyway, I had to have this fragrance. It's one of those kind of scent profiles. It has that hazelnut. Um, it has that roasted coffee uh, according to this as well. Uh, again, just a standout fragrance. Uh, a lot of people will say it kind of reminds them of Dior Ohm, and I can understand that. But again, that coffee in this really gives uh, a uniqueness to that kind of, you know, irisy, powdery kind of vibe that you get from Dior Ohm. This is an amazing fragrance, guys. This is the original, not the Omo Intense, which is great in its own right, but the original Valentino Omo, easily 
a perfect 10 out of 10 fragrance. So check it out. I love it. This is Valentino Uomo. All right, guys, that is it, man. That is my time, man. I hope you enjoyed this video today. What are some fragrances you have in your collection, your designer fragrance collection, that is, that you feel are a perfect 10 out of 10 or a masterpiece? I would love to hear from you down in the comment section. And as always, I sincerely appreciate your time and attention to these videos. You don't have to watch, but you do. And I sincerely appreciate that. Now, don't forget to make sure you take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you are sharing these videos out to some other folks out there that you think could use this information to find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren, I'm the Voltaire Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good, keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.